Welcome to today's episode of Southern Farmer. We haven't been with you in a while, but uh, we've been busy with harvest. We've been getting a lot of footage. Uh, we got a little harsh weather here and there as we've been trying to get the cotton out, but uh, we've been ginning uh, pretty steady, and uh, here we go. Welcome to Double V Gin. This is the module feeder where the cotton makes it uh, its uh, first appearance as it enters the gin. And yes, we have a little holiday spirit. Happy Halloween, everybody. This is the walking floor trailer, or walking, um, excuse me, walking floor. Uh, and that's Gilbert and Lorenzo. The walking floor. Nobody's driving the tractor. Whatever. Walking floor. Not to walk on. You can walk on it, but each individual slat moves to the rear or away from the module feeder. And then uh, it's set on a certain speed to feed the cotton, the modules, into the module feeder, into the gin, at a certain pace. They all slide into the module feeder at once, as if the floor is moving. They move about a seven, eight inches at a time, I would say. Then you got the dry tower, right there, big old box. It shoots the cotton into, kind of separates it a bit, shoots it into the gin where it goes through cleaners, big cleaners as you see there on the left, the little window to the little, yeah, right there. All right, we got the stone trap, which the big funnel, Glenn's gonna show us uh, what the stone trap is. Basically, any trash or anything, you can pull that rope right there and it will fall well, that's why that garbage can's there, but it will fall out. Nothing's in there right now. Uh, Glenn's a gin stand man. He is ready. Got his AirPods in. Well, one AirPod, one earplug. Safety first. Okay. Uh, the After it goes to the first cleaner, those are the belts that pulls a lot of everything. There's electric motors, fans, all type of different things. Uh, power in the gin and sucking. It's, it's basically all air. All these pipes are just a suction to pull the cotton through the gin. Okay. These are the gin stands. That's the cotton that is falling into the gin stand. That's a Continental Super 96 uh, 141 Double Eagle. There's saws behind that that separate the seed from the cotton. Um, that's probably the most drastic change at any given time that you'll see because that cotton right there has seeds in it. That's, that's just strictly picked cotton, goes through one cleaner, uh, which basically just separates it like the module feeder does into seed. Here's the bigger gin stand. I believe it's a 191. Those are the only two in this gin. And here we go back to the primary lint cleaners. The first one was a cleaner, but it was with seed and it just kind of blew the major amounts of trash out, dropped the stone trap. I would say this cleaner probably gets rid of close to 20, 30% of the trash that's in the cotton. As you can see, that cotton's fairly clean. The seeds are all ready to remove by the saws in the gin stand. You can tell a little more about it back here as the cotton travels a bit slower over a roller. Of course, there's still trash in it. There's air hitting the cotton, which is a lot of that little trash you see right there. Then there's two of the, or one on each gin stand. It's basically part of a gin stand. Each cleaner has to fit into the gin stand. Okay, so that's the little trash that's blown from the cotton, that is already seed removed. 
And this is where the seeds go. They are augered out into another suction pipe, which goes under the floor, up vertically into this pipe, which those two ropes on each side are that valve. That valve splits three ways. It can go to trailer one, trailer two, or to the, what we would call the seed house, which is just a, basically a holding tank. Uh, of course, that's trailer one, I guess you would say. And uh, that's where we're blowing them now, as you can see the air, very dusty. Trailer two, all we have to do when trailer one gets full, put it in trailer two. And the seed, seed house was right behind that. This is the overflow of the gin stands. Um, basically everything from these overflows just gets recycled back into the, in each gin stand equally. But enough of that, let's go upstairs and see what's happening to the cotton after it's ran through all the gin stands, all the cleaners, and is about to go into the press. We've got lots of augers turning, um, rollers rolling cotton into, which those are the big cylinders of the press right there. We'll come back to that in just a second. Here is the lint slide. The lint slide slides cleaned, ginned cotton into the press. It rolls, rolls the cotton evenly into the tramper, which is on a timer. And when the press presses each time, it knows with a timer and sensors and eyes and different things that it's basically all automated from this point on. Really, the entire thing is. And there's Glenn. He's on the phone. Who would who would have thought it? But anyway, the cotton is blown into here. Lint slide goes into the press. As you can tell, most of this is gear and a chain driven. That's a little little bit that you can see from the lint roller there. Lint slide needs to maintain a lot of. Uh, Not a lot of friction. It's got to be very, very slick where the cotton can continually slide down throughout the day. That was the tramper. It goes into the press from the tramper. One last look. That window shows it going from the tramper into the press. These two big cylinders or rams, as you can tell here, uh, that's the cart side. It's, we had it apart a few a year or so ago. We actually moved this in about two two summers ago. And that is where the bale is exiting the gin, sacked up onto the bagger. The conveyor chain pushes it out the door and it's loaded onto the truck. But Back to the back to the press. I want to watch you uh, let you watch. There's the tramper. Puts it into the uh, press, into the chamber of the press. It gets until it's around 480, 490 pounds each time, and there it's twisting. And here goes the cylinders pressing the cotton into the bale shape. I'm not exactly sure the PSI or the, the force that is pushed down, but it's quite a lot. Those cylinders are probably 16 inches, 12, 16 inches diameter. 
something about like that. Let's go back down and see uh, the bottom side of the press. There's the overflow again. It's steadily running. Nothing, no major overflow yet. And kick a little bit of that back in there. Don't want to make a mess. Here's a control panel. Uh, be honest, I don't know a ton about that. Uh, it controls a lot of the moving parts throughout the gen. Other than the press, uh, a lot of the heat and a lot of the, the speed and just really everything. So here is the bottom side of the press. As you can see, that's the bell that we just watched press go out. There's Lorenzo. He's all, he's all over the place right now. The bagger is pushed out and pulled out onto the dolly, which is loaded onto the truck. Each individual bale is weighed and tagged and kept up with on the books in the office. Loaded onto the truck. Now here's the strapper. It'll be just a second before the uh, before the next bell comes comes through. I think they're like I don't know, thirty to fifty seconds, give or take, between bales. And that's about. That's kind of just how we stack it uh, in the trailer, in the van trailers, and they're hauled from here to the warehouse, from the gym to the warehouse. Uh, it's another trailer they've got started on. Um, well, that's the moats. Yeah, that's the moat press. That's the basically second-hand uh, cotton. Oh, it's just the trash trailer. But the second-hand cotton, the trashy cotton, I think it's used a lot of times for like to stuff furniture cushions or something like that. I'm not not, not textile or cloth. So that's some of our storage. That's the burner thing that humidifies and heats the cotton. Okay, here's the here's the next bale. It's pressed down, and the strappers will engage pretty soon. There we go. They shoot the strappers. It's a signode strapper, and like I said, it's all automated. And when the press goes back up, the cylinders go back up to the top where we were a while ago, that little piece kicks out. Then the chain, conveyor chain, rolls it onto the cart, which no one's touched the cotton from the time it's set onto the walking floor out in front of the module fitter until now. So it's, it's really an automatic process from start to finish. And uh, here's the office. This is uh, Kathy and uh, Glenn. Glenn's everywhere. And there's Gilbert. He's just kind of overseeing things, trying to make Glenn act right, which is it's tough sometimes. Uh, but Kathy's keeping everybody straight. She's keeping, uh, keeping watch on the scales and making sure, well, it zeroed back out. And hey, was quick. yeah, everybody's working hard. Gilbert's uh, masked up, making sure he's staying safe. Dr. Pepper on deck. We got a 500 pound bell right there. Bear Ward Law Cotton. Well, that's about the full process of the gym. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe.